Okay, let's look at this one for a minute. Draw the Lewis structure for the carbonate ion, CO3, 2 minus. All right, so how do we draw a Lewis structure? So remember, the first step to draw a Lewis structure is to draw all of the atoms and draw the Lewis structures for each atom. So to draw the Lewis structures for an atom, we need to write the symbol for that atom and then how many valence electrons it has. Carbon has four, one, two, three, four. They go around one at a time first, at one at each corner. Oxygen has one, two, three, four, and then we start pairing them up, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have one carbon and three oxygens. The next step is to choose what goes in the middle. So to choose a central atom, we choose the atom that's closest to the center of the periodic table. And also, we want to make our molecule symmetric, nature likes symmetry. So in this case, carbon is both closest to the center, and if I put carbon in the middle, it would be symmetric, because I can put the oxygens on the outside. So I put carbon in the middle, put the oxygens on the outside symmetrically, and then we can fill in one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now that we've kind of positioned them the right way, put the C in the middle, now we connect single electrons. There's a single and there's a single. There's a single and there's a single. There's a single and there's a single. All right, so at this point, we've made three single bonds to oxygens. I have one electron left over on carbon, it's unpaired and one electron on oxygen, one electron on this oxygen, and one electron on this. So at this point, um, what we have to do is figure out how to pair up all of these unpaired electrons. We can't have unpaired electrons in our molecule. They always have to be paired up. So sometimes it is tempting to do this and try to join those together. What we would make then would be a triangle, C, O, O, C, and we'd make a triangle out of atoms. Nature does not like triangles. The angles in a triangle are too small. Those atoms would be too smushed together. So making a triangle is not the way to solve this problem. Don't want to join those two electrons together like that. So even though I drew the electron on carbon down here at the bottom, it's okay to move it. I'm going to move it right over here just because then it's lined up with this electron and I can make a double bond like that. So now carbon is all filled up. I used this electron on carbon to make that bond. I moved this one up here and made that bond and this one to make that bond and this one to make that bond. That's one, two, three, four carbon, four electrons that carbon brought in. And now also carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons. Carbon has eight electrons now. It's full. It's met the octet rule. It cannot hold any more. So now I have one unpaired electron here, and I have one unpaired electron here. Everybody else is satisfied. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. But this oxygen has seven, and this oxygen has seven. So what do we do in this situation? Well, remember, I have not done anything about this two minus yet. All I've drawn so far is CO3. I drew the C and the three O's. But two minus, that means that this, uh, this is an ion. And this ion, if it's two minus, it has two extra electrons. That's what this means, two extra electrons. So where am I going to put them? Well, I'll put one of those electrons right here. And I'll put one of those electrons right here. I can pair them up. Then I'd have. 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. 
And when I do that, when I this all of these atoms were neutral because over here they're neutral. But when I add an extra electron here, what happens to that oxygen when you add an electron to it? Well, it gets a negative charge. What happens to this oxygen when you add a, an electron to it? Well, it gets a negative charge too. And we can see that if we, one, we're adding an electron to it, so it gets a negative charge just conceptually, that makes sense. But we can calculate the formal charge. Formal charge equals valence electrons, which carbon, valence electron, or excuse me, oxygen has six valence electrons, minus six plus balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because we just count the stick here, seven. So six minus seven equals negative one. So here is a Lewis structure for carbonate. I'm going to clean it up a little bit because sometimes when you're connecting the dots like that, it ends up looking a little bit rough. So let's kind of clean it up and draw it like this. I have one double bond to oxygen and two single bonds to oxygen. And we can put in the lone pairs. Man, it always joins these dots. One, two lone pair, or excuse me, two lone pairs. Three lone pairs. Three lone pairs. And then we'll draw the, the formal charges on those atoms too, just to complete this Lewis structure. I should draw the charge, minus one, minus one. All right, here's my cleaned up structure. I wrote the, write the formal charge on each atom. Okay, we already did that. Draw all the resonance structures of carbonate. So here, when I've drawn this resonance structure, I joined all the electrons, I added the charges, I drew the formal charges in. So how would I know if I'm looking at this that this has resonance structures? It says draw all the resonance structures. How do we even know? We know because I decided, we can even see it right here. I, in the first structure, I drew a double bond down here to the one on the left. But in this structure I drew over here, I drew a double bond up here to the one on the top. So in fact, I've already drawn two of the resonance structures. I did it on accident, but if, you, if there's more than one place you could draw a double bond, in fact, here there's three. I could draw a double bond here, or I could draw a double bond here, or I can draw a double bond here. If there are three places that I could draw a double bond, then the resonance tells me that I must draw a double bond in all three of those places. If I don't draw a double bond in all three of those places, then I have not drawn an adequate representation of this molecule. So I'll draw the last one by putting the last double bond goes over here to the right. Then I have a double bond to the left, I have a double bond to the, that goes up top, and I have a double bond to the right. And then I'll fill in the negative charge, negative charge, Got a little, kind of ran out of room there. So I'll, I can quickly draw them over here. C, O, O. So when you are drawing resonance structures, this double-headed arrow goes in between the structures. This is an important arrow, and what it means is these are resonance structures. Draw the double bond to the right. Draw the double-headed arrow for the last one, and draw the double bond here to the left. All right, and now, just to be, to be really complete here, we'll draw in all of these lone pairs. When an oxygen has a single bond, it has three lone pairs. One, two, three, when it has a single bond, that's how I'm doing this so fast. When it has a double bond, it has two lone pairs. Double bond, two lone pairs. Single bond, three lone pairs. All right, and now, finally, we just put on the formal charges. The ones with single bonds have a formal charge of minus one. Minus one, it doesn't matter exactly where you draw it, just draw it next to the atom that it goes to somewhere. There you go. So here is the complete set of resonance structures for carbonate. Double bond up, 
double bond right, double bond left.